He's going to have, like, literally Candace Owens and Jordan, Jordan Peterson singing on it. Uh, Ten months. Also means Thank that Kim is single. Thank community for not only giving hit me up. To hit my line, Kim K. To learn how to be a better progressive. Okay, I got all the memes out of the way. All right. But this was not a regularly scheduled election, and you can make up two-point deficit and turn out in this context. So far, Democrats have shown a strong hand at every point, whether it's early voter to cap numbers today. You can look at the Democratic numbers and say, wow, they were going to win, and maybe that is what it would look like. But the GOP has not had an equal opportunity to show their hand because we don't have a great election day numbers from Trump count, uh, country, and because we don't know, we know that they don't love early voting. Yeah, it's uh, fucking terrible. Okay, what is this? Key race alert. Percent to 47.9 percent. It's very early. Uh, 2,598 votes for Asaf. 2,300. It's just changed a little bit. Asaf Salid has gone up to 310. But remember, this is extremely early. These are the first official votes coming in from Georgia in that Senate runoff. Uh, in the other Senate uh, runoff, Raphael Warnock, Kelly Leffler. Uh, 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 Warnock is ahead right now by almost 300 votes, uh, 3,542 for Warnock. Leffler, 3,243 uh, uh, votes, 52.2%, 47.8%. Extremely early right now, but the Democrats have a very slight lead as these first votes are coming in. A ton of more. Dude, this shit's so dumb. Like... I love when CNN does a breaking news key alert. I love when CNN does a breaking news key alert when like 10 people have voted. It's so dumb. Why would you ever do that? Breaking news, 10 people have voted and John Ossoff is ahead. It's like, Radical okay. Has buff. It's so fucking stupid. Well, you're just giving people false hope. You ruined your take as you're eating? Yeah, I know. Months, let's freak uh, I mean, I'm just memeing when I get excited about that. Oh, here. A newly sworn in congresswoman going viral with an ad explaining why she's carrying her gun to her new job on Capitol Hill. Election was so Even though I now work in one of the most liberal cities in America, I refuse to give up my rights. I will carry my firearm. So the, we've memed about this already, but I got to say something here. Uh, it, it is, it is a gigantic meme that. that that lady is. Wait, what's going on? Oh no, Kelly Loeffler has overtaken Raphael Warnock. Dude, I just, okay, dude. I knew that y'all were going to be fucking babies about this. Okay, I, I knew, I, I knew I shouldn't have looked at this. What a terrible, terrible thing I did. Oh no, one of the needles has moved. The Asaf Purdue needle has moved to the right. 0 0.1 for Purdue. Whereas the Warnock needle is still on the left. Zero, less than 0.1%. Listen, as you know already, Interviewing for a job at Michigan it can't be one or the other. Voters pog. Democrats have to win both. Republicans can lose one. So that's, uh, let that be a reminder for all of you okay, who Elijah. do not remember. We're winning by a lot. <laughs> Democrats are winning and by a lot. Okay, let's see what the fuck uh, other channels are saying as well. This is the Georgia GOP election night party. You want to see, uh, you know, corpses celebrate. You have the live Stop the Steal coalition still What's going strong. What's corrupt foreign money has told you to do? You better not do what the powers that manipulate out there, that Jezebel spirit tells you to do. You better do what we, the people, have elected you to do. Dude, these people are such freaks, dude. Oh, my God. See what Washington Post analysis is looking on like. On the Republican side to threat in Georgia, and and it may work out fine, uh, but but this is something that does concern national Republicans. Even you know this evening as returns start to come in. You know, James, you make such an important point, and I want to take this over to Ron take this over to Rhonda. Um, that if Kelly Leffler and these are technically my coworkers, so Chad. Right now I'm a become doom appealed. I think. 
I mean, they're doing they're twelve k Andy, but hey, you know, they're they're technically my my coworkers over at uh, Amazon, over at the Wapo, Washington Post. Jezebel. Dude, these guys are they, these are these guys are there ahead of the fucking real rally tomorrow, which is what we're going to be watching tomorrow, of course. Like they they are they're so excited Runoffs, to on, fucking boys. lose their shit that they went to DC and are are losing their minds already. All right, what's the what's the new Gamba? Will both needles be blue in the next ten minutes? Okay, awesome content. The tables are open, boys. Will both needles be? Blue in the next 10 minutes. Need more khaki, Steve Kornacki. If you want to suggest some prediction ideas, let us know. Um, okay. I will. Uh, wow. Dude, people are not gambling as much as they were yesterday. Okay. Let's see what the fuck Fox News is saying after this break. Be a topic, I want to see. It's interesting to see what's going on, but I know you're taking a close look at DeKalb County just outside Atlanta. Uh, and before you do that, Nick Valencia is there on the ground for us. He's got some new information. Uh, what are you learning? Yeah, DeKalb County, very important for Democrats. John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock need this to secure a win here. And we just got an update from the county spokesperson who tells me that it's been smooth sailing, though there was a precinct just northeast of here in the Stone Mountain area of DeKalb County that was court ordered to stay open five minutes later at 7.05. They closed, uh, closed their polls there. That's because they got a little bit of a late start. But uh, also an update here on in-person voting right? today. Uh, it is eclipsed, far eclipsed what we saw in the November election as of 6.55. This is just about five minutes before polls closed. According to the spokesman here, spokeswoman here, we had 55,000 in-person votes, well eclipsing the totals that we saw uh, in the November election. Today's totals, uh, the spokeswoman says, will likely equal the totals that we saw for the entire general election in November. I'm here at the DeKalb County nice. Board of Elections. We're behind me. You may see a lot of activity, people coming in and out. They're starting to scan those votes that were cast today. Earlier, they said they had caught up with absentee ballots. But, Wolf, we should remind our viewers that provisional and overseas ballots with military ballots have until Friday to be received. So we won't get a final tally here in DeKalb until at least Friday. And just a quick story about the importance here and Georgia voters really understanding the significance. Earlier tonight, I met 25-year-old Rachel nice. Tropper, who this morning, Wolf, woke up in Virginia. The recent college grad is a Georgia resident. She hadn't received her absentee ballot. So this morning at 11 a.m., she made the decision to fly down to Atlanta to vote in person. I asked her how it felt. She said this was for democracy. Just a little bit of a story there, Wolf, about how important it is for these Georgia voters. God damn, bro. This is hurt. Good Wolf. for her. Uh, very impressive indeed. All right, Nick, stand by. We'll get back. Dude, we're such a fucking broken uh, country. So much fun during these oh, sick. Like, She's literally had more. the fucking fly in the middle of a goddamn pandemic to be able to vote, dude. Than it wasn't a general election. That's extraordinary. That's actually extraordinary. You just see the first results coming in here from Fulton County now. So let me start there. It's the largest county in the state. It's Atlanta and the suburbs to the southwest and Atlanta. up to the north here. Uh, John Ossoff at 80%. One of the things we're going to watch throughout the night, we have the Ossoff-Purdue race, 80% to 20% if you round. You come down here, 80%, about the same, roughly the same. We're going to watch as this plays out, see, shouldn't be the case, but is one candidate, you know, are the candidates running parallel with each other, or are there any differences? This is the first in Fulton County. So we go back to here, and Nick is in Still DeKalb County. These results just came in the first again. 435 votes, 278 votes, just for a little context. First, let's come back to the Ossoff-Purdue race. 420 to 290. Just for a little context, go back in time in the primary. Still We're expecting counts. a lot more votes. This is the presidential race. Biden, Trump there. We can look at the Senate race here. 298, 61. So we have a long way to go. No, but why does shouldn't. it matter? Why does it matter? Well, let's come back to 2021 and remember that the Atlanta area and the suburbs around it not only have to be blue for the Democrats to have a chance, but their margins in these suburbs have to be quite significant. So as you watch the margins now, again, John Ossoff getting 80% in Fulton County. Let's go back to the presidential race. Joe Biden got 72%. If John Ossoff can be running 80% at the end of the night in Fulton County, uh, the Democrats will be in play. You move over here uh, to Gwinnett County, you see 58%. You come down here to DeKalb, you see 83%, right? This is huge for the Democrats. DeKalb County is absolutely essential to the Democrats. This is the presidential race. 
This is the Senate race between Purdue and Ossoff back then. And again, David Purdue did a little better than Donald Trump in some of the suburbs, but in this one, he got blown out pretty big there. And so then you come back and what are we seeing early on? Again, 59%. John Ossoff has to do a lot better than that in DeKalb County. If John Ossoff is not up around close to 80% at the end of the night, then he's in trouble. But again, 423 counts. votes to 290 votes. We are just Wolf beginning what will be a long chapter. And you're beginning to see, again, a smattering of votes here and there. Uh, Atlanta, the first big population center to come in with a tiny amount of votes. But this will change, especially in the next hour. We were told at the bottom of the hour into the 8 o'clock hour here in the East Coast, we'll get more and more votes. If you're looking at the map now, you can make no conclusions except for the fact that they are starting to give us votes. And again, what I do on a night like this is you just pop around, you see... 1,100 votes, the only thing you would think of is to go back and look. Right? So pray and pray. Purdue Thank you for the 5 0 gifts. How did he do in November? That's President Trump at 73%. Hey, the needles look David blue Purdue to me, brother, but they said 10 in the minutes. Early mo moments as we go through this, you're just looking for percentages. Does anything seem very different? Is turnout up or down? But when you have only a couple thousand votes and only you know, 120,000, 130,000. Yeah. No, Literally, this is a holding pattern. Okay, folks, you already know what this is, all right? It's kind of a silly bet to do right now at this stage, but it's like funsies, so whatever. But like literally everything that you're looking at right now is it completely meaningless. Why is it completely meaningless? Because we don't even know anything. Like only a couple thousand votes have been counted so far. So like just because CNN is making it seem like, like you know, we're about to find out everything right this moment doesn't actually mean that anything will be, uh, uh, anything will come to fruition. You're not going to know anything yet. We have time. We can fuck around and say stop the count Social shit like that but you know it's it's bullshit i just for me i i find it hilarious that you know those same fucking brain dead republicans who are brain dead like they are if you're a republican you're you have a, a significant problem in your brain um for all those Republicans, like, I can't wait for them to fucking constantly complain about gridlock Congress. I hate that the Congress is so gridlock. Why the fuck can't they do anything? It's like, dude, you did that, okay? Congratulations, bitch. You got what you wanted, okay? It was good when I was sewing. But now it's time for the reaping and I don't like it. Yeah, sorry, uh, chat. It's still seemingly at blue. Oh my god, I have freaks in my audience who are like, Come on, Purdue! Come on, baby! Advocating for Purdue to make a fucking... Love all your content, bro. Thank you. To awesome. make a push. So that you can win a couple votes? Oh my god, Owen Schroyer of uh, InfoWars. Everyone's favorite, everyone's favorite radical Amish, dude. This second American revolution. Dude, these guys are such fucking losers, bro. They're like, what are, what are you guys doing, bro? Come on. Like, Georgia, Georgia's going on. These motherfuckers are talking about American revolution. Yo, why don't you revolutionize some bitches, dude? Uh, President Tilden. Brett, Martha. <laughs> Little history lesson there, Chad. Thank, Thank you. So let's bring Thank in you. Trump campaign senior advisor, Laura Trump, for more on tomorrow's vote in Congress. Laura, good evening. Good to have you with us tonight. Um, you know, tell us what, what the president... Why is Laura Trump giving interviews on Session. Georgia? Just paying my taxes to the... Well, audience. I think he expects that uh, the vice president will make sure that it was a free and fair election. And look, we want to make sure that if there are any contested... Uh, uh, votes, any people that don't want to certify in the Congress uh, votes for Joe Biden, that they get their chance to, to debate that. And, and I think you just heard sort of the, the way it will work tomorrow there, that they will split up then the joint session and the House and the Senate will split up and have time to debate. They'll come back and they'll vote. But look, we want every legal and legitimate vote counted. We've said that since day one. We have always maintained that. And I think that there are 74 million plus Americans out there that don't feel like that has happened yet. So we want the right thing to happen and, and we'll see how it goes. 
Yeah, we understand, and clearly you're right about the, the sentiment. We hear it on the ground here in Georgia a lot from voters who just didn't think that the election went fairly There's here not in Georgia that many or other points. places. But I guess to, to Martha's question, at the end of the day, does President Trump believe I mean, it's only that like he's going to be president January 21st? 10, mil 10 to 20 million. Well, That's not I, a lot I of points. I think he believes he won this election. And I think that there are many people that agree with him. And I, I, look, I think what uh, Senator Ted Cruz has proposed. Did y'all go broke? What happened? I feel like yesterday there was like 50 yeah. million points. We do need an audit. We need a commission to investigate what has been alleged. As yeah, we were hitting like 100 million total in Gamba. Now we barely hit 30 million. What's, what's wrong? across the country who either experienced fraud pot themselves, who witnessed it. We have to take that seriously because it's not just about this election. It's not just about re-electing Donald Trump. You weren't fucking gauges, dude? Wait, am I losing my mind or is Laura Trump wearing gauges, bro? What the fuck? And, and look, for 74 million Americans, again, that outcome is that Donald Trump is the 45th president for a second term in office. Uh, but we just want the, all the legal votes counted and we want people to be able to see very clearly and, and have a, a transparent feeling about the process uh, of our elections. I, I wanna play Guys, you can't, ha you can't get horny over Laura Trump. She literally fucks Eric Trump. Like that's just devastating, dude. You you really got to reapproach. You you your priorities really are your fundamentally flawed. You. Like you're, yeah. This is Eric Trump's wife. Imagine, by the way, that there is a per. Oh, already allowed the murder of sixty million babies in this country. We've done so many other evil things. So we're deep down in that water. We're hundreds of feet deep. It's going to be hard swimming back to the surface. And not everybody is going to make it, year, but that's okay, so because God in the end, God memorable. will fulfill his destiny and will reward the righteous. When you see Nancy Pelosi, or you see Barack Obama, or you see that slave of Satan, Joe Biden, they want to bankrupt you. They want to dump you down. Thanks for bringing they want to hurt your children because they're fallen and because misery loves company. We renounce Satan. We renounce the Democratic Party. We renounce abortion. We renounce the Communist Party of China. But more importantly, we embrace God and family and justice and strength. I will carry myself. Just as we rest. see in the Bible and just as we see in history, God rises up men who are real, not men that are perfect, not men that are above reproach, but real men like President Trump, who has fought hard for our republic. Who's fought hard for justice? Who's done the best job he can? Happy and fun, because Martin. he has represented us, he is under attack. So we hold up President Trump before the creator of the universe. And we say I want to remind that everyone that President Biden Donald Trump went on this dude's broadcast as we are. But and did a 45 minute interview with him before uh, America, before winning the election. Hold him up in this hour of peril. You the best. But regardless Remember when Trump happened, literally went on this Trump. fucking freak's actual broadcast and gave a 45 minute interview? I remember. We have turned the tables against the Satanist. We have turned the tables against the globalist. We have seen incredible victory in the last 4 years in the global awakening. God and his consciousness creates the ocean that creates the waves on which Donald Trump or an Alex Jones or you ride in on. But is God in control of human destiny? Not Bill Gates, not Warren Buffett, not Lord Rothschild, not the globalists. And it's that simple understanding that God of the universe 
is in control, not the globalists who want to play God. We recognize God. We connect with God. And we transcend the Satanist by doing that. Tomorrow is a great day. Thanks for joining us. Like, Joe Rogan has this dude on. We don't quietly take the scam and believe their BS. Ooh, new We've Gamba. The, evidence. the system has had to desperately engage in this gambit to maintain control. But this will be their Waterloo. This will be their destruction. One Ooh, whatever happens to President Trump in 15, 15 days, he is still the elected president of this republic, and we do not recognize the communist Chinese agent Joe Biden or his controllers. Like Joe Rogan put this guy and America on a show, and the world is watching everything you do. With the big tech censorship and the economic attacks and the COVID lockdown. I think it's common. And the UN martial law, world government. I think he's going to say it. Foretold for thousands of years is now upon us. And it's pathetic and it will be defeated. He's going to say it. We finally face the world no, government chicken right. little witch hunt system. And we have the deaths of 2020 from the CDC. 61,000 more people died in 2020 than died in 2019. Wait, and what? You That's count, not true. When you count the drug addiction, the drug overdoses, and suicide, less people died in 2020 than died in 2019. The chicken little hoax that is... COVID-19 is broken, but you have this to go is not out true. and you have Cancel. to expose it because upon that lie of COVID-19 and that chi engineered virus that Bill Gates owns, they built this entire system on that lie. So we must now pray for President Trump and lift him up to God and ask God to give him the guidance and the discernment and the leadership awesome. to make the awesome. decisions awesome. in God's awesome. plan awesome. that bring down awesome. the new world order. And it comes down to that. Thanks, Churchill. Gave that was January to October. Where he said, all I can promise you is blood and pain and war and suffering. But the alternative is even worse, total slavery. So we don't care what the New World Order does. We commit to Christ and we commit to war against the globalists with the truth. And we will never surrender. United States had 400,000 more deaths. Never, never, in 2020. never. Never no matter if you're in a jail cell, or no matter if you're dying of cancer, or no matter if your car broke down in the middle of the desert, the God of the universe built you, and the God of the universe loves liar, you, dude. and the God of the universe will deliver and fulfill you, but you must have faith and open that channel. And that's why, in closing, I'm so honored to be here tonight. With this amazing group of people. He's not going to say The most powerful it. speech that I've ever heard. Because the spirit of God is with us. Three months ago during the election. The in spirit Georgia. of liberty is with us. And if God be with us, who can stand That's against us? Him. So I will tell you again. I trust in the plan of God. What a fucking I trust in freak, Jesus Christ. dude. I trust in the narrow road, not the easy road. I trust in the great contest of liberty. I trust in my forebears. And I trust in you, created by God. 
The globalists are in fear. The globalists want to play God. They are not God. And the answer to their 1984 charity is 1776. 1776. 1776. 1776. I am so honored to be here with General Flynn and and Roger Stone and others coming up. But they are just as important as you are, whether you be black, whether you be white, whether you be old, whether you be young. God made you and God loves you and they will never separate us. We will prevail. Amen. Imagine voting for someone who these people are such freaks, dude. American yeah, there's no so what the fuck is this? Folks, when we started this and put this event on, the number one word, as I told you guys, was you unity. United as a party, united as patriots, united as Americans. Bro, that's two kids in a suit portraying themselves as an adult. It's not about President Trump, it's about each and every one of you. Your voice is being silenced by a fraudulent election. You know it, I know it, and everyone here knows it. As two children in a suit. Pastors, our next pastor, of course, is the president's pastor. He is actually, he's one of the first, first African Americans to ever stand up for Donald Trump. He's been backing him for five years. I love the man, Pastor Mark Burns. Yeah, Vincent adult man, dude. Radical liberal Raphael Warnock Radical. Patriot! Listen, do that got some God fearing 1776 Trump loving patriots in the building tonight! Okay, we can't do this. It's like directly giving, it's giving me brain cancer. I have brain cancer now. There's no, it's non-preventable. It's over. The state system opened an extra three hours. It was supposed to close at 11 p.m. Uh, and now it's going to be open until 2 a.m. Here's why this matters. That allows officials in Georgia to tabulate more votes tonight up until 2 a.m. with those absentee ballots because this is the same system they rely on for signature verification. They initially were going to stop uh, counting and working on those absentee ballots at 11 p.m. because they wouldn't have access to that system. That has changed. They have an extra three hours to process and tabulate those absentee yeah, ballots that, just... as we know uh, skew democratic he also tells me that a vast majority of results will be known tonight uh, those votes that came in before today more than three million votes he said uh, will likely be known tonight and he says that is because officials in georgia those election officials Absolutely. have been staying on top of processing and scanning those absentee ballots so that they all they needed to do today when those polls closed was to tabulate them and we're seeing those results coming in as we speak, Wolf. Very interesting indeed. They're doing a pretty good job so far counting these votes, John, and they're going to stay open longer so we'll get more results. So it is possible later in the night we'll have a clearer picture. I'm not going to be crazy and say we're going to know who wins, especially as we expect these races to be close. But it is possible we'll have a much better sense because, as Pam noted, uh, th this time it was not optional. It was not optional. They asked the counties to deal with the mail-in ballots, to deal with the absentee ballots, to get them processed, ready to be counted, as opposed to back in November because of the pandemic, because yeah. of all the concerns and the complexities. A lot of counties had the options to just set them aside and deal with them after the polls closed and everything. So they're much more prepared this time. Another point. I I don't know. Uh, when we talk about mail-in ballots, Democrats faring a net 4.5 points better in uh, the absentee vote and exactly as expected in the early vote, it, it's not enough, I don't think. Because the same-day votes, we if Republicans some? outperform in the same-day votes, as it looks like they might, I don't know if that will, uh, that will be enough. Because same day votes, they will have to fare uh, even uh, higher than, up. or I guess, I guess they would have to make up for it in the same day votes. The Republicans would. The four point five. I still think that. I mean, I don't know. It's so fucking close, dude. It, it is so ridiculously close.
And that's the only realistic hope that we have here is the fact that it's a very close race or it looks very close. Democrats would like that to be a higher percentage. We'll watch what happens. Again, we did see back in the presidential election in November, David Perdue did better than Donald Trump did in Fulton County. The Atlanta we're up, suburbs so we're to the losing. South and to the north. Why is Kekwait still the clown face? I don't know why you guys didn't change that back. But I guess because you're a clown. Like when you go, oh, am I the clown? Anyway, um, it doesn't matter. 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 Uh, look. Oh, it's the Joker. Okay, got it. Oh, it's yeah, we'll keep it. We'll keep it. We'll keep it. We'll keep it. I was wrong. I was wrong to criticize it. I, uh, personally, the needles are tilting. Is uh, Oh, damn. They're tilting in, in favor of, uh, Warnock and radical, radical liberal Raphael Warnock and radical liberal, uh, John Ossoff. Yes, I saw that Pelosi has signed uh, AOC, Tlaib, Porter, and Bush to the Oversight and Reform Committee. Maybe that was a bargain. I don't know. It's half of the your every half hour. As always, I have to repeat myself and tell you that it should never be close. Like, the fact that there are still people the voting Senate for the Republican Party Friday, when the candidates the that they're voting for are like not even aesthetically uh salt of the earth you know regular old everyday average joes they're like literal fucking millionaires and billionaires um who have made millions of dollars like firing people and have like literally specifically fired georgians it's still wild to me that they're still voting for him Several more in counties with uh, 98% reported. Pulaski, Purdue, plus 39. Okay, he's underperforming since November. Lanier, he's underperforming by three points. Underperforming by one, uh, two points. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's really good. Another great result for Democrats in Turner County, 98% reported. Purdue is plus 21. He was plus 26 in November. Ossoff needs to outpace his November performance by 1.78 points. On the margin, on average, for a statewide, uh, on average statewide, the win. Okay, this is actually the, the first uh, good sign yeah. that I've seen so far. Like, this is actually good copium shit. Maybe GOP gets pissed and doesn't show up today because of Trump's doing. No, I, I think that that could be part of the reason. And the other part of the reason is very likely that, like, they lost. And when you lose, you're depressed. You're not, you're not ready to go back, pick up the fight and fight on again and go out and vote again. Like when you looked at early voting in Marjorie Taylor Greene's uh, district, they were down and that's a deep red district and they were uh, severely down from the general election. Feel like they'd be angry and want to vote? No, 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 no. I don't have high hopes for tonight, TBH. They don't think they lost though. Well, the ones who fucking wouldn't uh, get themselves to go out and vote probably are the ones who are like, "Yeah, we kind of lost." You are. Mike Flynn and Alex Jones interview. What the fuck? Oh my god. I can't believe that. That's oh yeah yeah like. Like, Mike Flynn is a like fucking QAnon supporter, dude. And so is Alex Jones. Will the hogs go crazy in D.C. if G.A. loses tomorrow? Yes. Hogs are going to go crazy regardless. I mean, look at the hogs right now. They're already going crazy, brother. Look at that. They don't need to fucking win or lose in G.A. to go crazy. Oh God, worst haircut, Trey Gowdy. Country on the face of the earth. We should not settle for any error rate when it comes to elections. So uh, to the extent that that's what the senators and house members are doing is saying, how can we make sure future elections are gonna be? Oh, you think that's bad? 
You think Trey Gowdy's haircut right now is bad? This is the most normal looking haircut I've ever seen on this motherfucker. Yeah, Watch and this. And obviously, 60, more than 60 courts have weighed in across the country as well. Trey, thank you. So we'll be right back. We're going to uh, first get an Atlanta traffic report. <laughs> this is the Tom Moreland interchange in Atlanta. It's affectionately known as Spaghetti Junction. Traffic is synonymous with Atlanta. This is the intersection of I-85 and I-285 that surrounds the city. However, the region... Atlanta okay, shut up. Radical liberal Raphael Warnock, Look at this radical shit, liberal bro. Liberal Raphael Warnock, radical liberal Look Raphael at this Warnock, shit, Warnock, bro. Radical liberal Raphael Warnock, radical liberal Raphael Warnock, radical liberal Raphael Warnock, I mean, this radical one's my favorite. Raphael Warnock, radical my my liberal favorite Raphael is probably Warnock. this one. The, the half Karen and the perma Karen. I love you, buddy. Like, this is literally the I want to talk to the manager haircut. Like, he went and he was like, he went to Supercuts, okay? Trey Supercuts Gowdy. Went and was like, what makes it seem like I will call the manager? This is the Richard Spencer Hitler's youth cut. Draco Malfoy. Nice Incredible. Hassan. Incredible stuff. Swag and stuff. Yeah, okay, he's he, he does he does have the Ellen DeGeneres. Literally. Uh, ye, my mom has been spamming me with anti-vax stuff and I had to block her. Sorry to hear that, brother. Still, needles are still remaining the same. Uh, he looks like a character creator with terrible hair options. Yeah. Chant all the legal votes, boys. Chat all votes to simp for Hassan. Ellen Degenerate. Wait, what's the fucking uh, prediction this time? I, I, I missed it. Gay frogs. New results one minute ago. Warnock, 15% in. Radical liberal Raphael Warnock at 57% in the GA Special true. Senate runoff results. I mean, it's decision desk. And it's only 15% of votes. My father taught me not to insult another man's hair. It'll come back and bite you. Yeah, I mean, too late. It already bit me, brother. I'm balding, so. And, and will at least one needle go red ending in four minutes? Oh God, did you talk about the state Republicans in PA? Uh, I don't know exactly what happened there, but they were trying to block uh, uh, an appointment. <laughs> hey. Rockstone did nothing wrong, leave Rockstone alone. Rockstone did nothing wrong, leave Rockstone alone. When you mess with the Clintons, there's a target on your back. Catch a suicide or jail for life or a sudden heart attack. They'll call you Russian assets when they're all out of luck. Tell me, how'd you get obstruction when there's nothing to obstruct? Roger Stone did nothing wrong, leave Roger Stone alone. Sing it! Roger Stone did nothing wrong, leave Roger Stone alone. Bright and gray! Roger Stone. He did nothing wrong to the FBI, he the press when they back away in his home. I guess that was a demonstration of intimidation. Anyone think that's a bit amazing or humiliating? This the witch hunt, they said he lied about the email. Without providing the details, the deep state trying to shut us down, but we prevailed. But they the ones that get DL. And he's supposed to shoot for their own like that. But he can't focus, so we fight back. Roger Stone is taking all the hits, all the bullets, all the leads. But sometimes that's what you gotta do to get on the right track. Yeah! Roger Stone, everyone! I take it back. We should give him the Senate. I mean, this is so embarrassing, dude. It really, like, they should just, they should have, they should have political power just as a treat because they're, they're never going to win culture. Subbed, and they desperately, they so pass. desperately want to just, just have all semblance of political power just as a treat, dude. Oh, 
praise for the one and only Roger them all. Isn't that kind of weird that like he's surrounded by black people when we know he's like a very racist person? Thank you, Jesus. Because I am living proof that God can do anything. Uh, the other thing that I, I need to mention is that Roger Stone is literally a cuck. Like, unashamed at, at being a cuckold. Like, he very famously used to put out ads looking for nubile young men to fuck his wife. Like, he is a, a known cuckold. Which is funny because, like, everyone in the alt-right uh, considers him to be, like, a god or something. Reverend Franklin Graham and Reverend Randy Coggins and so many others. My own Monsignor Grady back in Fort Lauderdale. I turned this problem over to God. He's also part of the reason why George W. Bush was the president. Like, a big part of the reason. So, you know, fuck him. He's such you, a piece of God shit. God will never abandon his people. God will deliver you from your persecutors. So I thank God for giving the greatest president since Abraham Lincoln the wisdom, Has the courage, the strength to correct this injustice. We are here on such an improbable night. In fact, everything about the Trump presidency is improbable. That a billionaire who cannot be bullied and cannot be bought and cannot be controlled would rise up to save this nation from the two-party duopoly Yeppers. that ran this country into the ground. Yeppers, you believed, but it doesn't seem like it will happen for you, Yeppers. I think the Nopers will end up winning this gamba. We couldn't possibly revive our economy because it was structurally impossible. You see, you Americans just have to get used to having a back bench in the global, uh, global economy. And Donald Trump said no. And his series of tax cuts and regulatory cuts and his renegotiation of those massive international trade deals that were sucking the jobs out of America gave us the greatest economic boom in our country. Now we know what's happening here, don't we? Speech. Glad I the same from people that who tried to initiate the Russian collusion hoax, the Russian collusion delusion. Those are the same people who tried the Ukrainian hoax, and then they sought to profit from the fallout from COVID-19, and now they seek nothing less than the heist of the 2020 election, and we say, no way. I got a message for Chuck Hugs. Todd. Chuck, I take one look at you. You should be behind the counter at J.C. Penney. You're not articulate. You're not clever. You're not smart. Dude, you don't look good on TV. But let's be clear. The evidence of voter fraud in this election is not non-existent. In fact, it's growing. It's overwhelming. And it's compelling to anyone who will open their eyes and look. What we've been subjected to here is a very sophisticated psyop. Bug. They told us during the election, Trump can't possibly win. Because of his handling of COVID-19, they told us, suburban women are fleeing the Trump coalition. He, he's At done, he's Abbey finished. Specifically said he's but this done president the last time. fought his way back from the precipice fought his way back from the abyss, and there is no question whatsoever that he won a majority of they the really legal the votes cast. Will's taking the blood cult in a weird direction, though. I've known Donald Trump for 40 years. He didn't run for president because he wanted a bigger Castle. plane or a nicer house or higher name ID. He was already the best known business person 
on the face of the planet. He certainly didn't want to run for president to give up his Hassle. business or his private life because he loved real estate and he had the greatest life in the world. No, he ran for president because he saw what was happening to America and he didn't like it and he decided that somebody had to do something and he was that someone. Let's be very clear. This is not an election between Republicans and Democrats. This is not a fight between liberals and conservatives. This is nothing Test less than an epic the struggle for, for the future of this country adults. between dark and light, between the godly and the godless, between good and evil. Do you think and we will win Jones this fight or America will step death. off into Influence a thousand years of order? darkness. Okay, bro. Uh, it's so sad. It's like not even fun anymore. Uh, 46.9%. We could stop counting right now. Alex uh, and Asif and Warnock uh, would win. But we, we wouldn't do that because we're still counting ballots. <laughs> this is the argument that President <laughs> Trump and at least 126 uh, House Republicans have made, which is that on Tuesday night when they went to bed, Trump was up in Michigan and Wisconsin. Shut the fuck up, Jake. We're not going to sleep yet. Georgia What's and Arizona. But then more votes came Nobody in. Nobody goes to sleep at 5 p.m., Jake Suddenly Tabber. Joe Biden took the lead. Yeah, more votes came in. And that's what happened. And we're going to watch the reverse happen here. I don't know who's going to win Biden these and two Biden. Senate races. But there are going to be, it's going to get a lot closer. And perhaps Purdue and Leffler will pass Warnock and, and Ossoff. I, I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen. But we're expecting a lot more Republican-leaning counties. I don't know about life. Jake, but I do know one thing. It's top of the hour every hour, brother, which means it's time for a six-second hour break. And, and that's what an election is. You count all the ballots. You'd like to you count have an ad-free broadcasting experience. All you need to do is subscribe, brother. You can do it for $5. Or you can do it for free by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch Prime account. You can get your wife's boyfriend's Amazon Prime and connect it to your Twitch Prime to get one free Twitch subscription, which allows you to no longer see the ads, brother. Here's the fucking one minute ad now. Stop the counts in Pennsylvania, Michigan, etc. There's no way that could happen. And then all these votes come in in the middle of the night. This channel and and Joe Biden takes the lead. But of course, there's a way. My wife's boyfriend is, is Latina. And that tension is one of the reasons That's why we do. Why it That's why we so need to build the wall. For election officials, <laughs> Republican, Democrat, Independent, or people who are in the news media to cover this because it is so intellectually bankrupt to argue that just because more votes came in for the other candidate he as cried, votes cried. were counted in the middle of the night, that that therefore is indication of corruption. It's not. And it's very frustrating to watch this double standard. On that subject, I wanna to go to Caitlin Collins right now because there's new reporting on the increasingly tense relationship between outgoing President Trump and Vice President Pence ahead of tomorrow's certification of the election results in Congress. Uh, Caitlin Collins, tell us what you're learning. Yeah, Jake, earlier we reported that President Trump and Vice President Pence had a lunch today. It doesn't appear they actually had lunch during this meeting between the two of them, where we are now being told that basically the Vice President went through step by step with President Trump what it is that he can do on Capitol Hill tomorrow as Congress is meeting to certify Joe Biden's win. And in essence, all right, we got one county where Purdue is outperforming. Is not going to be an ability to block the certification of They've Joe Biden's done. win. Basically, this lowering of expectations of what the president can expect. Someone who we got one county where Purdue is outperforming, folks. Two more counties are 98% uh, reporting. Ben Hill County, Purdue is plus 24. He was plus 27.7 in November. Candler County. Up the good work hassle. Candler County, Purdue is at plus 42. He was 42.2 in November. He's underperforming across the board. Sorry, I said overperforming. He, he's oh. underperforming in comparison to the general. Purdue is plus 178 statewide in November, so the results of these two counties point to a close race. Stop the count! Oh, what's Tucker Carlson have to say? things possible. 
We want a democracy to continue. But then everything changed. The main driver the of fire that change, nation attack. You, was the corona pandemic. It simply became too dangerous to show up in person to vote. But think about that for a second. Three it doesn't really Alex make Jones, sense. Great industry if you can go to the grocery way. store, and most people can and do, then you can go to a polling place. There's no medical reason that you can't vote in person. It's not inherently Six unsafe. Obviously. Almost no one in the media. Well, the difference is like if there are viable alternatives, sacrifice it's kind of like the Tim Pool argument, right? And like if there's a all viable the alternative to be able, being able to w vote in person, chance. then why not do it? There is no other alternative to fucking not going to the grocery store because you die. You die if you don't eat food. Instead, we're going to let John Ossoff explain the answer. Ossoff is one of the Democrats on the ballot tonight in Georgia. He is an unusually oily, entitled young man who has never in his entire life, from what we can tell, done anything meaningful or impressive or even had a real job. He's got a list of credentials. He's literally like, if coronavirus is so serious, why not hunt for your food? Like, what the fuck, In a dude? world of shallow politicians, John Ossoff is lighter than air. He makes Beto O'Rourke look like Teddy Roosevelt. But he does know one thing. If you're worried about election fraud, you are a racist. Here he is in an interview yesterday. My opponent and the other Senator Kelly Leffler and Georgia Republicans have been filing lawsuit after lawsuit to purge the rolls, to make it harder for people to vote. It is an open attack on black voters in Georgia, and it's a disgrace. And it's I mean, he's right. An echo of the legacy. He's of literally Bush. right. Like, I, I love dunking oh, on John Ossoff as much as another guy, but like, if you're suspiciously now, purging mostly black and brown West. voters from the fucking voter rolls and 70% of whites vote for the fucking Republican in the state of Georgia, then maybe, just maybe, you're doing it I on fucking on purpose. A fishing lodge with okay? My father when I was 18. Like, I he think a big part of the why Republicans get mad at this is like, literally because the world order. they're he upset no that it's being called racist. Instead, like, Republic. maybe there should be a, a, another word for it. Like, because it is undeniable that you're trying to prevent black people from voting because 80% of black people vote Democrat. And 70% of white people vote uh, vote Republican. And that's precisely why Republicans do this. For making opposition like, maybe it's not because they think, like, black people are genetically inferior or something, has. but because they know black people vote Democrat instead of Republican. But it doesn't matter. You are literally doing it in a very racist way. The, 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 what you're trying to do is discriminate against black people from voting. And the word we have for that is racist. They told us that in-person voting... Radical like liberal Raphael Warnock. Even radical mispronouncing Raphael Kamala Warnock, Harris's radical name, radical Raphael, a name, by the way, she Warnock, can't pronounce herself, Raphael, Warnock, are all vestiges Raphael, of America's Warnock, racist history. Raphael, Warnock, so what's the Raphael, remedy Raphael, for a history that's evil? Liberal, Raphael, no, the fucking Warnock. vestiges of America's racism is the fact that, for example, if... If... Radical liberal Raphael Warnock ends up winning... He will be the 11th black senator. That's racist as fuck. I mean, come on. That's not proportional. You can't say that like, oh, there's only 13% of the country is black, Hassan. Okay, 0.07% of senators historically have been black. Lost by more than 50,000 votes. So it's not even but fucking proportional. It's not party, supposed to be proportional, but it's definitely vote. not proportional. Without voter suppression, Stacey Abrams would be the governor of Georgia. If this co country wasn't racist, Stacey Abrams would be governor. It was the voter suppression, particularly of African-American communities, that prevented us from having a governor, Stacey Abrams, right now. Yes. Stacey Abrams. Like, someone described to me why Brian Kemp, when he was running against Stacey Abrams, when he was the Secretary of State, literally looked at DMV statistics Exclamation to mark see how many people actually wrote by fucking pencil rather than by computer when they were plugging in their names and if names had apostrophes in them purge them from the fucking voter I rolls said, please help whenever i had the name raphael Warnock securing 12,000 fucking, 12, fucking votes what is wrong with me like at least 12,000 people from the fucking voter rolls that way and that's just or was it 50 I don't remember. I think it was, maybe it was uh, less than 50. But if you have hyphens Google in your name, Alex oops, Jones. sorry, boom, fucking purge from the rolls. <laughs> oh, it was 50K. Never mind. Yeah, I wonder why he did that. I wonder why, in every single instance of 
uh, voters getting purged in the fucking voter rolls, uh, do you have people literally looking to see what areas don't have DMVs, for example, or closing down DMVs in black neighborhoods and then implementing voter ID regulations? I wonder why that happens. <laughs> I wonder if he'll mention that Stacey Abrams' sister also denied one of the results in one of the counties where 4,000 votes were being purged. Um, yes, she ruled in favor of uh, the, the uh, purges from uh, taking place, uh, did, ruled against purges from taking place in two counties, but ruled in favor of purges happening in one. They're no longer in Georgia, therefore they couldn't vote in Georgia because they're not in Georgia. That's that not seems true. simple and obvious, but that standard... That's not true. 198,000 people that were taken off voter registration rolls had not moved. They had not moved at all. And yet, the, the uh, Secretary of State claimed that they had, with it, no evidence whatsoever, potentially a crime. The politics works. It goes without saying that the actual identities, the real identities of tonight's Democratic candidates are off limits. True things can't be spoken. That's okay, the rule. Right. You can't talk about them. You can call Raphael Warnock, for example, a pastor, a Christian, a pro-choice Christian. But don't you dare mention the words he actually utters in church, his sermons. If you do that, CNN would like you to know you're probably a political operative working for the hard right. In fact, you're taking his words out of context. Reverend Warnock's pro-choice stance and his words from the pulpit, often taken out of context, have been the target of the fiercest Republican attacks. You all right? <laughs> often taken out of context. Okay, so what's the context? Well, in the interest of objectivity and fairness, we're going to play one of the clips that CNN just told you is being taken out of context. It's from one of Raphael Warnock's sermons a few years ago. As you listen to what we're about to play, try to imagine a context. I hate him so much. Which this would be okay. Let's Dude, nothing gets me. Win. Look, I criticize Democrats all the time. I think they suck. Wait, hold on. I want to hear this. A man who has dominated the news and poisoned the discussion for months needs to repent then it is doubly true that a nation that can produce such a man and make his vitriol go viral needs to repent. America needs to repent for its worship of whiteness. Oh, America needs to repent for its worship of whiteness. Okay, and we've got time. God so let us America. know when you discover the missing context here. Oh, it's not hiding somewhere in the video. We just showed you the relevant parts right. of the video. Raphael Warnock doesn't say, just kidding, after his racist scream. I love that, like, he literally clip-chimped it regardless, refuses to look for nuance in what his sentiment is when he's talking about, like, clearly, an America that elevates Donald Trump to the highest office is an America that has a lot of problems, okay? And it is a white supremacist America. He said it's fucking racist. America is a racist country, okay? So... Turning around and like clipping that away and then doing the, oh, I'm so angry at what he's trying to say. I'm shocked, I tell you, face, as Tucker Carlson often does because he has no fucking arguments. Doesn't change that reality. Oh, this is a clip that's not out of context. We cut all the relevant bits. Those two things don't belong together, Tucker. If it's not out of context, why did you have to clip the relevant bits, bitch? Noise. If your personal achievements could fit comfortably in the ashtray of a sports car. At various points, Asaf has claimed he once worked as a senior national security staffer on Capitol Hill, which is pretty funny because, in fact, Asaf was what is Seven called in Washington a legislative correspondent. That job consists mostly of responding to letters from constituents. In other words, he was the mailboy. And not in a very impressive office, either. John Ossoff worked for a Georgia congressman called Hank Johnson, who was easily, hands down, ask anybody in Washington the single dumbest member of Congress. And that's saying a lot. Back in 2010, just in case you think we're overstating the case, Johnson, in a hearing which was on television, asked a Navy admiral with deep concern. Wait, what does that have to do with John Ossoff? Which is an island, not a floating platform, might capsize if... Wait, what does that have to do with John Ossoff? I mean, fuck John Ossoff, but like, what does that have to do with him? He asked the question. During a congressional hearing on the military's budget, Congressman Hank Johnson, Democrat... Wait. If John Ossoff is dumb by virtue of working for a person who asks dumb questions, then does that mean Tucker Carlson is a white supremacist because his main writer was outed as a white supremacist? Oh, wait. 
the main writer actually writes Tucker Carlson's okay. words, the white supremacist one that was fired. Oh, okay. That's infinitely more relevant in assessing whether or not Tucker Carlson is a fucking white supremacist than a dumb person hiring and someone dumb. who is, you know, maybe dumb or maybe not dumb. Interesting. Very cool. John Asa from applying to work with that man, Congressman Hank Johnson, and why would they deter him? That moment became a blueprint for John Asa's entire career. Lean into your mediocrity. Don't deny it. Embrace it. And when you're challenged, hide behind identity politics. That works. Hey, boys. You know, there is no, there is no better identity politics than literally photoshopping your opponent's nose into looking larger because you want to heighten how Jew 